What people need to understand about the Belt and Road Initiative, it's an effort to drive greater connectivity across the region that traditionally defined the Silk Road, both on land as well as on sea. It's largely a series of power, gas, oil, as well as maritime related projects looking to connect this region from East Asia all the way to Europe. This is a region that's experienced tremendous dynamic growth over the past two decades, but that growth has been uneven. There is this big gaping pockets of black here throughout Central Asia. There is this lack of connectivity here between these different types of regions, and that is what the Belt and Road Initiative is designed to tie together. For the world economy to continue to move forward, we also need to look at the less developed countries. The connectivity is uh, more than a physical uh, infrastructure. When we look at the three dimensions of interconnectivity, the physical one, the institution, and then the ideas, then uh, the interconnectivity or the Chinese version of uh, globalization will be robust and the sustainable growth uh, will continue. This is a data set thanks to Oxford Martin School and Harvard Schools, and there's a legend at the top left that you can see. Every red dot will be every Chinese airfield. The green dots will be each Chinese power plant, the blue dots each reservoir, and the yellow dots will be each wastewater treatment plant. In essence, the early years of China's growth was a hydro-driven story. But then if we play this forward to the start of the reform era, you also see the emergence of power. What you also start to see here in the early 2000s is finally a focus on wastewater treatment plant. This immense resource growth also has a drain on resources. Growth is a function of land labor capital. Looking at the land, we face a very uh, severe physical constraints. Population is aging. What is important is innovation of human ideas so that the growth uh, can continue. And we want to spread those ideas uh, not only uh, up under China, but also to the less developed countries. It's clear that if we're going to continue to grow at this pace, there are going to be tremendous strains on natural resources, and there's going to be degradation to environment. So the question is, how can this be done in a manner that will be able to draw on the lessons of the past two decades to tap into the potential of renewable energies? From the post-2008 period, as China really makes a strong commitment towards renewable energies, you see a story that where solar and wind industries were concentrated primarily in North America and Europe, and how really the center of production has shifted, particularly in solar, over now to Asia. The government give a lot of subsidies to firms so that the, the firms get a better chance for them to get restructured, better geared towards green growth. It's a really an opportunity for the region and for China to figure out how it wants to interact with the global economic architecture that's in place today as China moves forward into not only the near abroad, but also as China thinks about how it wants to shape the global economic system for the 21st century.